Okay, let's talk a little bit about the sex steroid hormones. There have been a number of research studies in celiac disease. So people that have gluten sensitivity that develop celiac disease as a result of that, we actually see in the literature something that's sometimes referred to as polyglandular syndrome, meaning that many of the different glands responsible for producing hormones, including the adrenal glands, the thyroid gland, the ovaries, okay, uh, and the testes in men, right, these glands are, can become broken as a result of that gluten inflammatory reactivity. Now, there's several ways this can happen, and one of it is through this celiac um, leads to reduced digestion absorption of food, so it leads to major malnutrition. So we get deficiencies in vitamins and minerals. You have to understand one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of people just you know, going to their doctor and the doctor measures the hormone and says, oh, you're low in the hormone, here's the hormone, and they prescribe you the hormone, is because understand that these hormones are made out of nutrition. They're made out of vitamins, minerals, and then what are called macronutrients. I don't know if you've ever studied this before in school or biology, Macronutrients are carbs, fats, and proteins. That's what they are. Vitamins and minerals are your B vitamins, your vitamin C, your fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, your minerals. These are Vitamins and minerals are called micronutrients, meaning they're very small. Your macronutrients are your carbs, fats, and proteins. Well, understand that these are the building blocks, the fundamental building blocks to all of the hormones. So if you go in and your doctor says you have low fill in the blank, right, estrogen, progesterone, etc., but they never measure vitamin, mineral, or macronutrient ratios in your body, they never even they never even blood test you or measure you, then they're just giving you a drug without asking the fundamental question as to whether or not nutritionally your your, your diet is adequate for your body to be able to produce these things. Because every one of you listening to this show has the ability to make your own hormones provided you have a diet that's conducive to good health. So celiac, gluten sensitivity for, as it relates to celiac causes severe malnutrition, which leads to massive vitamin and mineral deficiency and, and macronutrient deficiency, especially fat malabsorption. You have to understand that, that cholesterol, right? We look at these three right here. Cholesterol, well, you know, this is another thing. We could talk about cholesterol too. Cholesterol is the precursor. It's the mother hormone. It's the mother sex hormone. And if you are on a low fat diet or a low cholesterol diet, trying to reduce your cholesterol, if you're taking massive quantities of cholesterol lowering medications, you know what you're actually doing is you're setting yourself up for failure to produce sex steroid hormones because what, what the drugs do is they block cholesterol, but what your diet does, it needs cholesterol in it in order to, as a building block to make estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Now think about this for a minute. Since the early 1980s, when the first statin medications to lower cholesterol came around and were starting to be prescribed on a really regular basis. Since that time, look at how we've, as a society, gone toward massive hormone deficits, right? You actually, this, this is such a problem that in, in some towns, in some cities, you actually see billboards that say low T center, right? Or hormone center, right? These are popping up, these little stores, if you will, they're little doctor stores are popping up all across the country because we've been massively depleting the mother hormone on purpose for fear of cholesterol, right? And it's risk for heart disease. And what we've actually created is a side effect of hormone deficient adults. And now we're trying to medicate the side effects that were created in large part by trying to lower cholesterol or eat less cholesterol. This is a form of malnutrition, right? So we've got to have those macronutrients. Celiac disease causes vitamin, mineral, and macronutrient deficit, and so it can lead to massive changes in estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. But there's also research, so this is one element here, the malnutrition element. There's also research that shows that antibodies, just like celiac disease, has, there are antibodies that attack the gut and damage the gut. We're now finding antibodies that can attack and damage hormones and hormone receptors as a result of the wrong food, as a result of eating 
the wrong food item. So that's just another way that, that, that gluten itself can create or contribute to hormonal imbalance. Aside from the malnutrition, we get this autoimmune polyglandular syndrome, and it's not just estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. We can include thyroid in that. We could also include prolactin in that. We can also include uh, the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands produce cortisol, but they don't just produce cortisol. The adrenal glands produce adrenaline and noradrenaline, and they produce the, um, the mineral corticoids and aldosterone. So the adrenal gland is responsible for producing a number of different hormones. And actually, the adrenal glands also produce some estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And so again, if these are being damaged, there's a strong relationship between celiac disease and a disease of the adrenal glands called Addison's disease which is an autoimmune disease of adrenal hypofunction. So the adrenals lose their function. Now, many of you may have heard of adrenal fatigue before. Addison's is, is not the same thing as adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is, is when you lose adrenal reserve and your cortisol over time starts to drop, whereas uh, autoimmune adrenal disease is known as Addison's. That's when you develop adrenal hypofunction because your immune system is attacking the gland itself and, you're, and it's, it can't keep up, it can't keep making it. And so these individuals oftentimes do they're the ones that get put on that medication, and these are their long-term you know, potential side effects. By the way, this condition, I've seen it be reversed with diet change. So if you're working and you've been diagnosed with Addison's, you definitely want to talk with your doctor about the, the diet changes that you might be able to make in an effort to improve that. And then we have thyroid hormone. Now, I've done entire shows just on thyroid hormone. And one of the big issues with the thyroid is we know that gluten directly. So we know that gluten can directly create antibodies that impact or affect thyroid hormone. Um, there have been well over 300 studies on this particular topic at this point. Even a lot of endocrinologists now are saying, hey, if you have Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune thyroid, we need to probably measure and look at gluten as a potential cause. So gluten, we know, can induce a hypothyroid state through autoimmune processes. Now, on the other, on the flip side to that, okay, so you got thyroid low being low, you can also, we also see gluten can cause hyperthyroidism or Graves disease. So again, we've got, you know, Graves and Hashimoto's. Uh, can both be consequences of a gluten-induced thyroid dysfunction. But again, we also know that there are about 17 different vitamins and minerals and proteins that are necessary to produce and regulate how thyroid hormones work and interact with your DNA. And so gluten and grain-induced malnutrition, as well as autoimmune processes, can affect the thyroid. And the last one I'll address tonight is this one on prolactin. And this is more of a rare one. A lot of people have never even heard of prolactin. This is one of the hormones that you make, women that you make when you're, when you're breastfeeding, right? It's a hormone that helps your body um, get ready for pregnancy and it helps you to know when to let down breast milk. And uh, if you're making high levels of prolactin when you're not trying to breastfeed, this can actually pose a threat and a risk to certain parts of your physiology. And so some doctors will prescribe medications to suppress prolactin, but this is one of those things where, where research is showing that people many times with hyperprolactinemia or elevation in their levels of prolactin, if they go on a gluten-free diet, a lot of times what can happen is the prolactin levels normalize. Normalize as a result of a gluten-free diet. And I've seen this happen a dozen times or so. Again, this is not a super common situation, but I've seen this happen in my own practice at least a dozen times in women where they had a diagnosis of hyperprolactinemia that was resolved as a result of identifying a gluten sensitivity issue and getting them on a gluten-free diet. So we've got a lot of different ways that gluten can impact a lot of different types of hormones. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.